Okay. So good morning, a good afternoon, wherever you are today. Um, it's good morning for me. I'm not Dr. Pauline Crawford, and it's 8 a.m. here in Nevada. Um, so I'm a little bit just awaking. Um, good to see you all, and welcome to Baleha. Um, I know that we probably get a few more people coming in to the meeting. Um, in fact, even uh, Peter Bagley said he might pop in, who's um, our friend in the district. Yes, Marty? Um, so that would be good. Um, and I think where we have to start today is with um, maybe some sense of uh, praying for the world. I think that we are facing some great um, challenges in the world where war is now upon us once again, not just Ukraine, but in Israel and Palestine. So we are in great sorrow for everybody who's been, who is suffering from this, who have nothing to do with perpetrating it. Um, and I feel that um, maybe it's very appropriate to be hearing uh, some of your poetry as well, Holly, yeah, we will catch that. Um, but I think that just taking a, a moment to send prayers to everybody who's at this moment suffering and in uh, great fear and terror. And I would invite um, anybody who would like to just offer a prayer. I think especially- Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to offer a, a non-denominational prayer under the Rotary yeah. guidelines. Uh, yeah. However, I would welcome anybody that has hand movements for their bodice that they engage in with their religion to please feel free, uh, whatever. If you're into namaste or you bless yourself, uh, we actually don't care. Uh, I'll begin by asking Heavenly Creator, you are the creator of the universe and we are your creations. We ask for your blessing at this terrible time of, of oppression for so many people who are being held hostage, who are being put in prisons with wives and children, uh, for the attacks and missiles on both sides and for peace to come down upon this region and area before it inflames and, and drags in, as in the past, many other countries that would begin to attack and, and pick sides and create a terrible, terrible period of war uh, that we all know and understand within our hearts and minds is not good for anybody, um, whether it's the the investments we have made into Palestinians with loans or into uh, people in Israel. We know that uh, it is just a people's simple role in life to have a job, to put food on the table, to raise their children, to be able to afford uh, pita, um, to eat and hummus, and and to simply be able to conduct life in business. And, and we ask for your blessing and your guidance and your thoughts and for all of you that pray are with us, including those who do not believe in any form of universal creator and those who do not pray, uh, we ask then for you to please simply offer your kind thoughts and compassion for this terrible, terrible period. Let us see a ceasefire and, and ask uh, for peace. Thank you. Thank you, Marty, and uh, really appreciate that and amen. Um, my mission in my life and in the world is authentic harmony and peace between men and women of all denominations and all cultures and all differences. And this is why we need to look at what is happening and adjust our own lives to be um, honest and transparent and loving and kind. Um, and I'd like to ask um, Patty as our uh, present elect for next year, if you'd like to say a few words. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, again, uh, I echo everything that Marty just uh, put out there to the universe, to our fellow Rotarians. Obviously, we're humanitarian, so for us, it's easy. Uh, however, uh, I do want to share that in some of our um, 
organizations that we have, like the Friends of Rotary. I have uh, testified uh, some of, of the uh, people sharing uh, their personal experiences uh, through this time of war. And they said that our, our comments are keeping them uh, inspired so sometimes, you know, it's not a matter of, oh, I'm going to donate $100,000 or get on overseas and help them. Uh, sometimes it's just a simple comment, like Marty said, and it's actually making a difference. So a little bit goes a long way. So I just want to be mindful of that. And I know for, for, for us, it's easy, but being that this is a publicly uh, shared video uh, for whoever's ears it reaches, uh, it does matter. It all matters. And also, even if you're going to donate a, a dollar, it all goes to a higher cause and it matters. Thank you, Pauline, for uh, bringing attention to this. Absolutely. And um, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And what we have in common is that when we take our last breath, we take our last breath. And we must honor each other as unique and amazing human beings and peace and harmony and hope is the, the, the thing that is um, in my heart today. Um, so uh, in terms of just um, a couple of, of items before we invite our speaker, I just want to uh, say deep thanks to Patty for organizing the Paul Harris um, pin and and every, everything and getting it in the post. So um, Elaine, I believe is uh, Doris, Elaine here and myself are recipients of that. And I want to offer my appreciation to you, Patty, for organizing that. And that is um, something that I'm going to very much enjoy. Dr. And Dr. Pauline, I, I have to stop you in your tracks and I apologize in advance because like I appreciate the 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 thanks and gratitude I do because uh, who doesn't like it? However, I had very little to do with it. I am as gracious as you are to Fidos, who shared that with us. Dr. Miguel, who also I okay. believe initiated Marty, who kept us on our toes. Because to be honest, I kind of put it on the back burner, a, a little ungrateful when it, when I when when I when when I was reminded, um, you know, to get back to it because we were waiting. Uh, I'm gonna make an excuse because I'm human, so I'm always gonna justify everything I do. <laughs> and I was waiting on Rotary to, you know, get the points, trans, uh, get 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 all that stuff uh, for for our initial transfers. However, it got done with teamwork. Yes. This is how we roll. Uh, that's why we're uh, real, and I love being part of it. I love you. On the way, we have our tracking on the lane. Also, it's on the way. Uh, your pin will should be received in the next couple of days. Okay, and and yes, um, and I do appreciate everybody who's involved. But uh, I just wanted to say that I'm planning to um, in ask Green Valley, um, Green Valley. Rotary Club here in Las Vegas is a big club. And uh, Kay, the president, is having an event on November the 2nd, uh, which is um, actually to do with a Rotarian who flew around the world. I don't know much detail yet, but I don't know maybe whether Marty has heard of this person, but it, it's a, a special night. And I'm going to ask them if they would present my Paul Harris um, pin and plaque on that night and I'll take suitable photographs so we can celebrate that. Is that okay, everybody? <laughs> yeah, that'll be nice. That's nice. Uh, I know you went to like two different Rotary clubs last week. That's right. I went to Las West Las Vegas, which is a very, very small club, um, but they had a new um, member who was a young lady. Um, everybody looks young to me, but she wasn't very young, but she was um, much younger than me. And then I went to Rotary Club After Hours, which is a very lively club, which meets in a beautiful gallery in uh, in Summerland here. Um, both of them were very welcoming and I really appreciated them. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with you. And thank you everybody who was involved in, in organizing my, my own Paul Harris. I really, really appreciate that, Marty, Dr. Dr. Mike, Patsy, everybody. Okay, um, I think what 
what we will do now is we'll uh, invite our speaker to come and share with us. Um, and I'm going to just do a little introduction to Falinha Hassan. I've just got to get my... Uh, because, um, and maybe, I think everything in, in life happens synchronistically, and maybe this is uh, the right time for us to be hearing about your work, Valinha, a globally renowned poet, teacher, and editor. Uh, born in Najaf, Iraq, Valinha is, is celebrated for her profound and influential work. Uh, you are the first woman in Iraq to gain international recognition for writing children's poetry has been an inspiration for many. Uh, today, you reside in the US on the East Coast, I believe, and you continue to have a significant impact in the literary world. You've got 26 published books, that's uh, 25 more than me, <laughs> well done, um, and you're a true icon. So I'm going to invite you to share with us your personal narrative on war and me, and um, I welcome you to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am glad to be here with you, all of you, and I hope I can fit in this uh, wonderful organization. Um, I'm going to introduce myself as a, a poet, writer, author, uh, playwright, and I did, uh, my name is Faria Hassan. I was born in Iraq in Najaf in 1967. And I have master's degree in Arabic language, and I taught for 24 years in different schools in, uh, in Iraq. And uh, my book, uh, Breakfast for Butterflies, nominated for Balthazar Prize 2018. And this is the first book I wrote, I wrote in English because when I came to America in 2012, I came with uh, zero English. Then I taught myself by myself, and I was so happy when I heard my book. I did wrote in English. It's nominated for Pulitzer Prize 2018. And also, uh, my uh, story um, also nominated for a uh, Bush card. Uh, but uh, I remember when I went up, when, uh, like on my first day, uh, of uh, middle school in Najaf, uh, the Iraqi government announced they would close the schools for 10 days until certain victory over a uh, war with Iran was announced. But uh, the war did not end in 10 days. It lasts for eight years. And all my friends were either killed in this war or weren't missing it. And uh, while poetry comes easily to me, because I did publish my first book in 1991, it's called Because I'm a Girl, I have long dreamed uh, about writing a detailed memoir about the horse of war that I personally experienced, as well as the terrible hardship my family and my friends, uh, my friends uh, indoors. <clears throat> because in war, there are so many hidden events. Um, the writer should write about them, then maybe the rulers will wake up and uh, think a thousand times uh, before they start uh, a new war. I'm through that, my book, War and Me. It's now available to all English-speaking readers, and I hope every reader will find what they like. For example, those who love adventure will find characters who went to the battlefield looking for their brothers or their fathers. Those who are curious to learn uh, about the Iraqi families during wartime, we'll see how Iraqi family um, suffered from starvation and uh, death 
and those who enjoy learning about another culture, um, they will discover the rich uh, customs and tradition of the Iraqi society and how the society can deal on uh, dealing or deals with the living and dead people. And but the most important in this book, uh, you will see uh, how the war and blockade can affect innocent people, whether they are soldiers, women, or just kids. Uh, Pauline, it looks like you're talking, but um, I can't hear anything. I just, I wondered what, what happened there, what, what, what the pause was. Pauline, huh? Yes. Are you okay to carry on? Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, this is my introduction to myself, and I am open right now to any question or any oh suggestion yes okay um so is there, are there any questions at the moment or i wondered if there was um I have one yeah any poetry we might hear from you patty oh that was good pauline any poetry i do i do want to say like this see this is definitely like a full book it seems like uh what, what you just uh ended with uh is there is there a, a section that really is like your um you you know your your most um cherished i guess uh in writing it i know it must be hard to pick a, an area but i'm just curious if any of uh of that uh resonates um yes uh, when i did write about my um childhood with my grandma and my grandfather because they was treat me like i am little prince princess and that's, uh, you know, <laughs> that every time, uh, you know, I read this section, I feel I am with them. And I I get the same emotion when I was a, a baby. And because my grandma, she didn't have a, a child. That's why she treats me like a, a doll, <laughs> a life doll. And she will, uh, you know, do, do everything for me to, just to make me feel happy. Thank you for that, because, you know, just uh, you talking about her, uh, this hits a close to home because I'm so close to my grandma. And when you're talking about her, the smile just glow your face and yes. it's bittersweet to, to think like a book on war. Yet you could feel good still reading it. Sometime, Thank you. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, there is a there is a memory, you know, you like to keep it to yourself and also to share it with other people. Yeah. And, uh, so, and, uh, so um Baliha, I have three psychological questions that will yes. provide insight into your life journey and how you you feel. The first one is uh, a penguin walks through the door right now wearing a sombrero. What do they say and why are they here? Um I think if they say um, first of all, they said good morning because it's the morning time. And uh, um, maybe they uh, just come in here to wish you luck. This is what I think about that. Amazing. Amazing. I like that. I like number, that. Number two, how would you convince someone to do something they didn't want to do? Uh, I will uh, spoke to them about my experience with that subject first. And if I have a good experience, I will do that. I mean, I will speak, um, told them, the, yeah, I'm not forced them to do that, but I encourage them to do that by uh, add my experience with, the, um, uh, I think with, by choosing a good sentences. 
very, very, very insightful that you would you would work with them and explain to them. Like I said, these are three psychological questions. My last one is, you've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? If I if I can sell it, you can't or give it away it or sell it. What what would you do with it? I will. Um, I think uh, I will take care take care of him. And uh, maybe if I have a magic and I will make it to, to, to be smaller and then when uh, then I will take care of it and carry it where I am going. If yeah. I have magic. Yeah. Beautiful. That's thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, these These questions often come from interviews at Google and Apple. Uh, they ask off the wall questions to delve into the psyche and thinking of human beings uh, and have been very much so reported on around the world. The questions that they ask you to get a job at Google. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. And thank you. I, I, um, Dr. Mike wants to ask a question. I wanted to just ask you for here. What, what is your favorite um, poem of all the ones that you've written? Oh, for my work? Uh, I I love I love my work as they are my baby, and I, there is no you know favor for me because um, even sometimes if I if I have a poem but it doesn't fit to another people or the people dislike it, it's still my baby. You know, I still have uh, uh, my DNA. I don't care if someone don't like it. But uh, actually, the poems I write about my um, my life uh, during the Iraqi-Iran war. Uh, I know it's an awful memory, but uh, when I did wrote them, um, the reason why I did wrote, wrote them because I like to heal myself uh, by writing. And um, uh, when I did uh, finish writing them, I think um, I felt uh, relieved. And this is what, uh, you know, this is my favorite collection of the Yes, I think there's 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 a great release by just writing, whether yes, we publish exactly. it or we don't publish it. There's still that yeah. release. Yeah, uh, that's and, why I have um, a collection of poems I wrote in Arabic language, and I send it for publication in Sweden. Uh, it's called My Medicine, um, because in through this uh, poem I help myself, like yeah, I'm healing myself with and. Um, uh, because I don't have this um, much money to go to, you know, therapy and talk to them, and you know, because every, like um, I lived through wars. I lived um, when I was a teenage. I like I lived eight years for Iraqi Iran war, and also twelve years for starvation. Um, I mean, uh, the blockade, and uh, this is not easy for me to just to get rid of everything and start start over. And I need to help myself, and that's the good way to do that by writing, and especially poetry. Thank you, um, Dr. Mike. You have a question. Yes, Pauline. Thank you, and thank you for uh, being with us today. My question is because you have seen so much and written so much, how do you envision change in your world over the time that we are facing, especially with so much chaos going on? How do you see change in your mind? Uh, unfortunately, I don't see any change. And if there is any, change coming is going to be worse and worse because if not and if no one can believe in peace no one can you know the, the world will will come like will come to the very dark ending and this is what i am curious about and uh, especially it is um i can i came from um uh, I can tell, like, I came from the war zone, and I still live in it, even if I if I am here right now in America, but also I have my small war 
because I am a Muslim woman with a scarf and not everyone can um, welcome a, a woman with a scarf. They so many times they put me down. They don't realize I am intelligent woman. I have um, all these a good experience. I have education. Uh, but uh, also what I see right now, um, the um, the life is it's of course it's very uh, very difficult to live, but also the end of you can you can uh, uh, I'm sorry to say that but we can trust what's going on right now. It's so difficult moment. Uh, war is never end because in in my mind, maybe after the Iraqi Iran war, the Kuwait war, the Gulf War, it's end. Uh, the world may be coming these, but now I see what's going on. It's it's like a like a chain of war. It's continue. Um, you know, grow up and grow up. If Nothing if I is. could just if I could just get another part. Sorry to cut you off. Um, do you see yourself empowering others with your writing? I think so. Yes, I think so. It's like, um, and I hope people when they read my um, my memoir, uh, and they, I'm talking about the um, the people they have a the power to stop wars. Um, maybe they will said no. We it's end. We can continue uh, creating wars and uh, we need to live in peace. Thank you, that's Mike. My, for that. that's Thank my, you. Uh, hope. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask a question about um, women and war. I, I always feel that women are not natural perpetrators of war that women seek to nurture the world as opposed to fight. Um, do you think it's it's something that we can change through looking at the world through a woman's eye? Yes. Uh, first of all, in Iraq, in Iraq, we don't have a, um, a woman. We, they don't allow women to go to military or became a part of war in the fighting. But uh, all the men they go to the war for fighting and now she taking all the uh, responsibility to uh, you know she she will became the father and mother at the same time and she took care of everything kids uh, family financial everything she she will take care of that and um, now she has she she became a part of this war too uh, because she will be in the prison uh, when while the men are uh, you know, absent uh, all time, and if she miss, I mean, if she lost her um, her man, her father, her brother, she will take care of that for ever, ever, like forever, and uh, uh, that's meaning she's a part of this uh, war. But I think if the women ruling uh, uh, or became um, and uh, let's see, and the power, uh, I think um, she will she will realize um, the war. It's not uh, it's not the solution. She will um, uh, find because uh, women. I'm sorry to say that, but women, she's a creative. Uh, you know, it's not um, or her heart. It's, it doesn't create to the to to make war. She just will um, make make these and um, uh, maybe she will have more company conversation with other more than uh, you know go and have a military and fighting each other. Yeah, this yes. is what I think. Yeah, if we see the light, um, uh, the world uh, through. The women's eyes it will be more peaceful than now. Thank you, um, uh, Anna. You have a question. Are you there? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, Salam alaikum, Falila. Alaikum um, salam. 
and I just want to, I didn't want to show my face because I had no makeup. I don't look good today, oh <laughs> but it's okay just to show. It's okay. That, we don't that, mind. That, yes, that, that I am uh, just, I'm very happy to, to hear your uh, story. Uh, in other thank words, you. nice to meet you. And thank, thank you, you so pleasure. much for, for writing the, the poem, because I understand that's sort of a relief for you to escape from what has happened. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to put out there, uh, thank you for everyone for making that prayers um, very, very timely. We're all hurting inside our hearts for every life that's lost. And honestly, it's not an easy time for anybody. Um, even myself, if I come to my own people, Somaliland, um, they are under the radar. Nobody reports about them, but they are in war with themselves, which is even sadder. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all sad, whether it's Palestinian or Israelis or, but you know, we have to pray because the the very painful thing that I'm hearing and 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 I'm seeing is people, innocent people, um, taken hostage from both sides. I I have I have known and I still and I really like what you said, Falila, about women leadership. And thank you for Dr. Pauline and and uh, Mari, who is a very big supporter of women and and um, everyone. Although I see more women in this group than men, yes. and and that's because we really care about more. Like you said, the woman is is hurting from every side, and. Um, I'm sorry, I, a phone cut me off. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, yes. okay, yeah, I just rejected that call coming. Um, the women is 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 a double whammy for us from both yes. sides. So we never will rush to war. Always first to try and get some kind of, um, you know, reconciliation, talk, come to the table. But unfortunately, what happens in men world is they're just very quick to take this weapon. And and can you still hear me? Yes, yes, we can okay, hear you. Okay, so sorry, this call keep coming and I keep rejecting it. But I just wanted to say it's we have to pray more. I wanted to just end with that and thank you. I would love to hear a poem that makes me feel I love Arabic poems. They are very rich and very... Um, inspiring i want to hear i will have to continue to pray for the world i yes. sure hope it, this is not the beginning of world war three don't want to live in any war we pray and we pray and we pray for those who cannot defend themselves and especially for the children and the elderly and the weak if they are cut off of food and water and that's just terrible thing to witness so we will pray that men because they rule this world, will come to their senses and, and, and do something rather than killing each other and demolishing everything they can get their hands, whether it's uh, Ukraine or whether it's uh, Palestine or Somalia. I just, I have had it with them. Thank yes. you. I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you. And, but I uh, want to hear the poem. I want to hear the yes, poem. Yes, I will. <laughs> In yeah. Arabic? Yes. Of course. <laughs> um, do do you have a short poem that you can share with us? Yes, I have an uh, English and Arabic. Which one you like? To... And both. I would think both is is beautiful. Yes. Uh, today okay. we're very lucky to have a translation of the English in many members uh, around the world of French, Arabic, uh, Swahili. Uh, we also have Malay today, Gujarati, okay. Hindi, and Sean Chan is on. Uh, so in Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese, uh, we're very blessed. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to read uh, a poem called War, uh, War Museum. Whenever the dictators get bored of their long di daytime hours, which they spent sitting on their stinking chairs, they opened the door to the, their war museum and forced us to enter. We pay 
with our lives as a ticket for this entry to see the remains of soldiers we played with in our childhood. A picture of my grandmother who, when she saw a precious face, protected our orphan would come soon. A picture of my father military boots, which he lost in the border of city we thought belonged to us. Maps of city where there is nothing left but their names melted on the lung, on the tongues of kids. Women's abayas chewed up by the threads of tongues, models who could not find a deserving chest to hang on, large jars filled with the tears and sorrows of mothers and helmets, 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 helmets of a non-soldier. But on the door of this museum, they put, they put a big red sign, no exit. I'm going to read um, one in Arabic language. Balua is Mahal Harb. Bumujarad and Fetahu of Wabel Harb. Kalaa Abi Shababahu, Wada Kalaha Arian Minal Auda. Estelkat Umni Alla Serir of Demma. Watagatat be a hattiha. And Al Wahida to Letty Surtu. أراقب ساعة الصمت المعلقة على الحائط ببلاها وأعد دقائقها خيبة خيبة بعد حربين وأكثر عاد أبي علما أمي رفرفت معه عاليا واختفيا استحال بيتنا إلى بسطال كلما حاولت نفض الغبار عنه سقطت منه ذكرى محترقة ليوم ضاع في بالوعة اسمها الحرب. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And we appreciate um, all that you've shared with us and your, your messages. And um, I know that um, we too shared with us that you want, would like to join the club and we yeah. can we can discuss that as well. Um, uh, Sean Marty and uh, Quanta, who's our membership chair, is not here today, but we can discuss that after the, this meeting. But thank you. We would be delighted to have you member. Um, as um, Anna referred to, you know, this is a very uh, female dominated club, isn't it, Marty? Um, by design. And uh, in fact, um, as some of you will know, but I was certainly persuaded to come into this club because of the change in Rotary International having a female president, Jennifer Jones, uh, last um, last year. And indeed, next year, on July 2024, there will be another female Rotary International president. And the reason that this is, um, is, is important is that Rotary has been around for 118 years, I think it is. And Jennifer Jones was the first female. And in fact, women were not allowed to be members until the 90s. Um, so it's um, a shift in a big organization. Uh, and this is not about women running the world, but I'm very, um, all my work is about the, the empowerment of women with men. So looking at a women-centric lens, Women are creators of life. They give birth to children, to babies. We don't naturally go and kill things. Um, so I think there is a movement that I'm certainly part of, which is around authentic harmony, positive masculinity. And Rotary are about creating hope in the world. Well, surely life is about hope. So killing each other is not creating hope. And this is why... We have to really understand both local and global initiatives. And this is why I like the Rotary Club of Global Impact, because we have members here uh, from different parts of the world. And 
Farah has come in from Kuala Lumpur. And uh, David, I think you're here from a different part of the world. Um, and also Desiree, Dr. Desiree Richardson is coming in from England. I know that. And uh, Shankar is here from Bangladesh. Um, I think uh, the rest of us at the moment are here in America. Is that right? But we have... Um, Shankar is coming in from Gujarat, India, and Sean right, is India, actually in British, British Columbia, she, uh, Canada. Yeah. Sean is from India, yeah, from Canada. So um, I think sometimes we need to put our countries on our tagline here. But it is about joining hands across the world. And we see now with this uh, terrible war in the Middle East that life is changing and there are wars everywhere and arguments everywhere. And we need to work out how we're going to create a world of love. Um, so actually, I was going to ask uh, Dr. Desiree, Des Desiree Richardson, if you're, are you with us? Um, are you hearing? Yes, hi. Yes. Hi, hi, everyone. Was, because you, <laughs> you're so eloquent with your words of love, whether you would give us um, a minute of love in a prayer to help us in this world today, would you do that for us? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to say no to war and yes to peace and love and say that we need to unite. Um, and of course, my one wish, wish for the world is to fight with love instead of fighting with war. Fight for love, fight for peace and say no to war. To ask our most powerful presidents and leaders of our mighty nations to humble their hearts and be considerate for the sake of our men, women, and children. It's time that we say no to war and say yes to peace and love. The greater his heart, the greater the man, the greater his kingdom, the greater his people, the greater our children, the greater our world, and the greater our next generation, so that peace prevail across nations. We are the guiding lights of our rational world, and we, our children need us. We are to be more resilient and strong on the inside, mainly to take care of our homes, our families, and for our leaders to work in the fields, but for the sake of our children, our planet, and for, of course, for the beaten hearts of humanity. Women and men, we are the fixers and shakers, the movers and peacemakers. It's time that we say no to war and yes to peace and love. In many regions across the planet, women have been the forefront mm -hmm. Like we say, we are the nurturers of the world and the men, they are the builders of the world. So it takes for the men to say no to war and the women to say yes to peace and love. These are the most crucial and challenging times for men, women and children. So please protect our men so that our families can feel safe, respected, supported and we can function correctly and give our children or our future generations the best livelihoods and of course for their mental stability and well-being. We say protect the emotional intelligence of others so that we're not only protecting the world, we are saving the world from war, but saving and protecting the emotional intelligence of others so that we can have a considerate world of love, peace, and harmony. We say no to war and yes to peace and love. We ask the almighty God to protect us all. And as we send our prayers to these amazing countries who are battling on the battlefields that they give up all the guns. They put the guns and put the weapons down, but most importantly, put the food and water out for our children. Because many children are dying. There are enough abundance in the world. There are enough food and enough things that we can help the world instead of fighting the world. So like I said, let's pray for peace and say no to war and yes to peace and love. And there's only true love. It's only true love. Our world will know peace. Only true love. Our world will know hope. Thank you very much. So put love in all you do. When love wins, the world wins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. And uh, we so appreciate you. Um, I want to share a little story about how we can do things simply. Um, I have a, a, a PhD from my university who is a wonderful lady in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, as well as Farah, who's in Kuala Lumpur, but another lady called Dr. Veronica Shepherdson. And she runs a school, and in her school she has 
kids from four years old to 16. And these children are from the three different um, religions in Malaysia. So these children are Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu. And they all play and learn together. And in the morning when they come to assembly, they stand together and, the, and she says, okay, children, please close your eyes and pray to your God. It's so simple. We don't have to divide on the basis of religion. We can pray to our God or our divine or whoever it is that we believe in, and we can come together. And these children are so amazing. They are learning because they are the center of attention. It's not the teachers, it's the students. And these children become so amazingly good at creative things and imagination and sharing. And they're honored as individuals and they're allowed to even negotiate for time. So I thought this was a really wonderful example of how we can grow and share and be individual as well. And so the teacher will allow the child to negotiate for time. So if little Johnny says, I would like to have 10 minutes out, she will say, of course, you can do that. What will you do with it? And when will you give me that 10 minutes back? So where there are simple things we can do to teach our children to share and be unique and okay with who they are. That's my vision for the world. And um, are there any comments that are from any of the other men on the call here who would like to comment about what we've been talking about? Anybody? Shankar? David? Yeah, sure. I mean no, as you can saw, it is so wonderful, uh, really heartwarming to listen to, madam, and the kind of impact that this this kind of a language creates is uh, so incredible. I'm actually uh, admiring the fact that you have written 26 books. I haven't started on one, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to and uh, want to make something. Of course, I have some books on trade and investment, but that's not what I'm saying a book on what it is to be human and how we can really create a world that works for everyone. Uh, this is my this is my thinking and I'm so privileged and honored to be here being part of this group uh, talking heart to heart of concerns for humanity itself. So thank you so much. I look forward to hearing more from the others and integrating all that and carrying it forward. Thank you. Thank Pauline. you. Thank you. Um, and Sean, Sean, we haven't heard from you for a long time. Do you have anything to say? Well, uh, hi everyone. Yes, um, I just joined. Uh, thanks for having me again. Sorry for the late attendance. <laughs> so another other than a call just now, uh, with a contact of mine South Saudi Arabia on a business dealing. Um, yeah, as we know, we obviously live in unfortunate times. Um. I, I think it's also a good time to reflect. I have a daughter myself too. Um, so I'm always obviously very concerned about what kind of future she might have. Um, you know, I, I, I cry for her many times and, you know, we obviously, you know, hope for the best for for the world, for my daughter, for the children of the world. So, Thank you. Yeah, Thank pray, you, Sean. Pray, pray, pray for peace and, and love, you know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dr. Mike. Uh, I would say uh, one of the most important things that I have out of my PhD is that when we think of war, we think of a failure of diplomacy, the ability to communicate. And I will also say, because our club is dominated female, I will, of, of gender, as they say, I will also say, and there's statistical data to back this up, if there was more female leaders, there would be more peace and more would be achieved in seeking peace. Yes. I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mike. I do believe that. Um, and one of the things um, we, Marty and I were just talking about earlier, that there is um, a peace month for Rotary International, which is... February of next year, is that right, Marty? Um, and I think there's actually a Rotary International Peace Day. 
uh, but one of our um, to be twin clubs in Ghana, run by um, with our a member over there, David Douglas. He's looking at creating a peace conference um, in Ghana, and um, I've been invited to get involved, uh, and also for Ros Pira, who is uh, one of our members, and he's also connecting into the Institute of Economic Peace, which I don't know whether any of you know about, but the um, you know about this, don't you, Marty? The the Institute of Economic Peace in Australia is a worldwide organisation. Yeah. The, the eight pillars of peace, um, and maybe we can put that in the chat because I think the more we understand about what's happening in the global, uh, positive way, there's also an organisation called World Beyond War, uh, which Faraz told me about. World Beyond War, again, is a you know a a body of people coming together who are keen to create peace in the world. And my vision is that we don't get peace unless men and women understand each other and love each other and and that we really understand the value of women. So that's, that's my um, very great passion there. And Ritu, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Dr. Pauline. I, I am so pleased to have heard poems by our friend uh, Faliha. Um, I, I think the words were so powerful and uh, my message for her and everyone here, um, we need to come together. The leadership doesn't belong to any gender. It's our shared responsibility. We have our unique talents. We need to come together and do our role, collaborate, not compete. And that's all I have to say, and I am so pleased to have heard all of these feedback, your thoughts, and your um, your interest and your um, openness to hear about these topics and be open to listen to and be open to do something. And at the end, we need to do something. There's nothing bigger than taking small actions. Absolutely. And um, we also, uh, I'm also involved with um, the G100, which is a network of women across the world, which again, I would like you all to know about because these are a hundred different chairs. And my chair is positive masculinity and uh, Ritu is, is, is part of that as well. Um, and I know uh, Dr. Desiree Richardson is part of another uh, part of G100. So there's a lot of activity happening in the world and we need to be conscious and aware of this, of these all elements. And as I say, it's local and global. And that's what we have. If we can work also towards helping this peace conference uh, in Ghana as a club um, and make sure that, you know, those things come together. Now that we have this war in the Middle East, we need to really step up the pace um, and I'm sure there are things happening in Rotary International, uh, which uh, are happening on this front as well. So Yeah, I, I, I wanted to mention, in fact, Gordon McNally is hosting right now live the, uh, you know, Mental Health International Awareness Day. It's a global yeah. event that started at 11 o'clock. Uh, and the guest is actually a United States Army uh, gentleman. Uh, who is retired from the army is on stage with Gordon. So when we're done here, if anybody would like to to see the International Mental Health Awareness Day, oh, um, yes. please do. Is there a link to that? Where where is the link? To I that? will. Uh, everybody received it in their email from Gordon. Um, oh, yeah. it's also on the front page at Rotary.org right now. They're broadcasting live internationally. And I did also put the Global Peace Index report for 2023 into the uh, the chat. chat. If anybody would like to download that quickly before we we end, you'll lose access to it. But you could download that for free right now if you'd like to. Okay. So do you, do you all know how to save the chat? You go in and uh, you can save the chat because Marty's been putting up some amazing messages in multiple languages, which are very impressive. As I can only speak English, I'm always impressed with multiple languages. Um, so are there, are there any any other questions or comments from 
our audience. I believe uh, Aaron was here and he's gone. Yeah. He wants. I was to point. What was that? I also oh. wanted to point out the magazine. The magazine again. Uh, don't forget to read your magazine because there's great articles in there, and also, uh, you know, the president's letters in there. Uh, also, in in regards to the mental health, uh, raising awareness. But there's a a lot of good things in the magazine. So definitely, you thumb through it. Okay, excellent. Um, and I want to thank you, Faliha Hassan, for being with us. Thank you for an amazing insight and for reading your poems. And we look forward to um, maybe we can send some more out. I know Marty put the link out to the Amazon. So that must be to your books. That's really good. Um, Thank you, sir. So I really, really appreciate that. And because of our world situation, let's keep praying within our own lives and making sure that we do the right things every day and love everybody, even those who perpetrate the wrong things. We must see within them and find good in all. Um, Sorry, Dr. Pauline. I just want to tell Mediha, thank you. Very beautiful oh. poem. I already shared with my WhatsApp groups. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Uh, um, and thank you so much for having me. And I just want to leave you with uh, peace and love because we don't want them. We need them to live. Um, this is our goal to to live in peace um, because uh, Allah, our God, he didn't create us to fight each other. He created us to build his yeah. um, this earth and not to fight uh, each other about it. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. And I appreciate all of you. One of the things I will put up on the line is that for the next meeting on the fourth Tuesday, um, I'm inviting three passion projects to come forward. So depending on how you are uh, situated, obviously not everybody is here on the call, but we do have a private members meeting on the fourth Tuesday, and we invite three members to share their passion project and their a mission, a vision, and uh, give them 10 minutes each. So please let me know if that's anybody here who might want to do that. And we'll post it out on the uh, WhatsApp link as well and see who else of our members would love to join. So are there any other comments? Just if anybody would like to watch the World Mental Health Day, um, it's being recorded live. I did just put the link if you'd like to watch it and see what Rotary's doing uh, live right now across the earth. That's fantastic. And I think if we look at the consciousness of the world, the vibration that we all put together when we come together makes a difference in the world. Never doubt that. Never doubt that. It's all about energy, frequency and vibration. The whole of the world is made of energy. So let's make sure that we energize peace and love. And thank you all for, for being here. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you, everyone. Bye.